Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another canister filter from Oasi. Now if you've watched a few of these videos in the past you will probably remember that I took a look at a really good canister filter from Oasi that was called the Biomaster Thermo 600. That one eh, wasn't without its um, not faults but shortcomings it wasn't without shortcomings but with a few little tweaks it could be made into a really good really easy to maintain filter so I'm hoping that this one from a different range will be equally as good this one is the Oasi Filto Smart 300 this is the biggest one in this particular range of filters and I'll just give you a few facts and figures on this one there's three different filters in this range. There's the 100, 200 and 300. That relates to how many litres they are suitable to filter. So if you've got a 100 litre tank, you'd buy the 100. If you've got a 200, you'd buy the 200, 300 and 300. That's pretty straightforward. But they also have the ability to take a heater as well. Where the little primer thing is, you can slot a heater in there. I'll show you that in a moment. And again, the recommended heaters would be a 100, a 200, and a 300. So everything's kind of jive in there, but how much they'll actually filter, as far as a full cycle goes, really depends on how much media these filters fit in. So in a moment, we're going to take a look inside it. Okay, before we dive into this, I'll just give you a little bit of background on this particular filter. Because this was sent to me by a guy called Tony who lives within the grounds of Grace Wells of Fairham, which is a nursing home. And this is actually to go on a tank in the nursing home. So he sent it for me to upgrade and basically give it a bit of a kick. Now in this letter, Tony goes on to say that he suggested to the nursing home that they put a nice, decent sized tank in the nursing home, get a reasonable filter and just set up some sort of focal point and also some point of interest for the residents as well. So that's what they did. And ultimately he sent me this filter to pimp up. He also goes on to say that he's pimped the filter that comes with the tank, which was a dual, uh, it doesn't say here, but it's either a dual 180 or a 240, which I think is the medium dual, the 3.0. And that one was based on the instructions that I gave out in Pimp My Filter number six, which is a long way back. That feels like an eternity back for me, but it's always great when I hear people say, look, I've upgraded the filter, I've just followed your instructions, and things couldn't be better because that makes all this worthwhile, you know? It, I don't want people falling over themselves to praise me because that's uh, it's just ego feeding, you know? But when I get the occasional letter off someone who says, look, I've upgraded this filter, it's made a real difference, thank you very much. It's a good feeling because that's what this series is all about. It's just about helping people, you know, and sharing information. So hopefully Tony and the residents of Gracewell's Nursing Home will be happy with what I've done. I've told him to give us a ring when he gets it, open it up, and then phone me and I'll tell him exactly what I've done because it could be months before I actually get this video alive. So he'll miss out on all the explanation before it's actually set up. So let's take the top off this thing and take a look at how it works or how the manufacturer says it should work. There's a difference between those two points. Okay, so we've got the filter made from pretty good materials. It feels like nice plastic. The release clasps are good. There's a very good seal around here. It's a very thick rubber seal. It's almost like the ones you get in Fluval filters. On top of here, we've got a carrying handle, which is good. And we've also got this little thing here, which allows you to either fill it up with water or slot your heater down here. But the big problem there is when you slot the heater down inside of this chamber, it doesn't leave much room for media. And because of the shape of this thing, it's a, oh, it's a funny shape to try and get a lot of media in here. That's your in and your out. You basically just put that on, like that, 
twist it and that would lock it in place. That's a really easy release mechanism. So that's the top. The bottom has like a base plate on. Ideally that could have done with bigger rubbers because one of the things people say about this is that it does vibrate a little bit. It's pretty much sitting on hard plastic. You could solve that problem by simply sitting it on a bit of foam though. That's not a deal breaker. So let's get the top off. <laughs> hey. We've got to get it almost like in like a headlock to be able to get it off. So that's our top. Nice clasps. It almost looks like a some sort of spaceship. You know, of Star Wars. Anyway. That's where the water sucked out, that's where the water comes in. So I'll just tilt that up to give you a better look. Okay, so water goes in here and I can see there's a dark mark here, which means that the inlet pipe is touching the top of this foam. That's not immediately impeding the flow, but it is a problem. Ideally that wants to be pouring into the void and the foam wants to be taking all the muck. It doesn't just want to be concentrated in a small area. So water goes through the foam, which is angled for a better contact surface area. Then goes right to the bottom of the filter, and I'll show you down in the bottom there once we get the rest of this stuff out. Then it's meant to travel along the bottom and rise up through here and up through this section equally. I'll show you why it won't do that in a second. Let's just get that out. That's ultimately where the water is drawn out from. You can see that's a very big foam. That takes up hmm, probably three quarters of that big chamber in here, which it doesn't need to because the intake pipe is less than half the depth of that foam. So we will be altering that. Then we've got a couple of bags of carbon. And bear in mind the water's coming up here, so it's hitting the carbon first before it gets to that second foam. Uh, it's a funny situation. This section we've got ceramic rings which are actually very similar to Ehi Mech. A little bit bigger though. As far as a biological media goes, they're useless. Really useless. As far as a mechanical media goes, as a primary settlement in a big filter, they'll be really useful. But they're not useful in this filter. So there's three bags of them weighing approximately 1.5 kilos. So here we've got kind of a, a strange a three part situation, almost like a double figure of eight. And it's separated by these long dividers. One in there and one in there. They're exactly the same. So our water is expected to go down here, which it would because this seals off quite nicely once the head's on. So it will go down there through the coarse foam. It'll then hit another coarse foam, which is in the bottom. See, it only goes two thirds of the way along there. So it would travel through that foam. And then it would either come up here or come up here. It's meant to come up here and here, flow around the top, and then ultimately end up being drawn out by the pump. The reason I say it'll be either or is because water always finds the easiest route. So if it's just come down there through coarse foam and it hits another bit of coarse foam in the bottom of here, it's just going to scoot straight up here and get drawn out here. There's going to be nothing coming through here. Bear in mind, that's where our supposed biological media was. That's going to be sitting in more or less static water and that is a problem. I'll just illustrate that with this. So that's our divider. So the water's coming down the first section, through there, well, through a coarse foam, hitting that foam, and it's just gonna come straight up here. That's the easiest route for it. It's not gonna travel all the way through that foam and then come up here through the media and then over the top if the easiest route is here. So that's how the water flows through there presently. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do to make sure it flows through as it's intended to do. So we're going to scrap that 
as a biological media that is useless. We're going to keep the first foam that goes in that chamber. We're going to keep the foam in the bottom in exactly the same state as it's in, not cut it at all. But this big foam on the exit, we're going to remove that and not use that at all. I'm also going to chuck the carbon out because I want maximum space in here for filter media. And this is the stuff that we're going to fit into here. I'll just run through exactly what I'm going to do first. I'm going to alter this because as you can see, that's where the water's hitting. I'm just basically going to cut a little channel out of here to ensure that the water fills this space properly. It doesn't all hit that first. Really all I need for that is just a little sharp knife. That's it. Now, when our pipe sits on there, it's not going to be restricted. You're not just going to have one small area taking all the muck. It's going to go into here, and this foam is now going to be effective. Big coarse foam just left in the bottom exactly how it was. Then into the middle section, I'm just going to add a piece of medium density foam that I've cut to size. Very strange shape. That goes in there. Bumpy side down. So now even just by adding that, the water will be less inclined just to fly up through here because that medium foam has made more resistance. So hopefully we should get some water coming up here. But I'm going to add that on top as well. Now, although our greatest area of draw is here, there's more resistance there. The water's got to come up through a coarse, a medium, and a fine pad to get to this chamber. So hopefully, it's going to be forced to come up here, through the foam at the bottom, up, and then into here, to be drawn out by the pump. So now, really, we've done as much mechanical filtration as we're going to do in this first and second section. Now we need to add some media. And in each one of these mesh bags, I've got 750 grams of bio gravel. That is a porous gravel made from the same stuff as the bio home. It's excellent stuff. So this is gonna make sure that we get maximum surface area in the remaining space here. So we'll start with the middle section. One bag in. And two bags in. So in here, we've got 1.5 kilos of filter media. And if you remember, when this thing arrived, we had three bags of filter media. That was 1.5 kilos. Already, we've got 1.5 kilos in here. But we're not finished there. We've got another two bags, which will go down into the media section. Like that, and that still gives us space here to put a carbon pad or to add any chemical media or to stick another medium pad. You don't have to put anything on here, but you know, the option's there if you want to. So I've gone with another medium pad because we're not using the carbon, that's already been used. So that's it pretty much done, but we still do have a space here. Now I should have said before I started, but I'll put the links to all this stuff, including the media and the bags and the foams, in the video description and also in the pinned comment. So check those out if you're interested in any of this gear. That's what originally came. That takes up a hell of a lot of space. And it's a bit of a waste because although foam is good at trapping muck and supporting a reasonable amount of bacteria, it's got nothing on proper biological media. You know, the surface area in here is hundreds of times more than it is on here. So we wanna try and get more in here, which we've done with the filter media. And we're gonna add a smaller foam because we're kind of limited by that. That's what fits on the pump head that needs to go into something. Ordinarily, it would go into there. 
I've swapped that for a smaller, finer sponge, and that now goes into there. And that slots in there, our pump head goes on, and that's a pretty pimped filter. So now the water drops in here, it's not impeded by the top of this sponge, as it once was. That settles out a lot of the heavy muck. It then goes into that big sponge, big coarse sponge in the bottom. And it, some of it rises up here, where it wants to be drawn up, but we've kind of slowed it down by the medium and fine pad. Remember, you don't have to put a fine pad, you'd probably get away with just the medium. Then we've got filter media, then we've got that sponge on the outlet that we're kind of stuck with. So it either goes up there, or initially, more likely, it'll travel through that coarse sponge, up through the media, it then goes out the top of here, and ultimately it will end up in this chamber. So even if we totally blocked that off down here, and forced all the water along from the first section straight to the third section, the water would all come up there, over there, and it would end up in here. So both of these chambers would have water flow through them. That is very important because the way it comes set up from the manufacturer, the water finds the easiest route through coarse sponge, coarse sponge, straight into coarse sponge. Um, it's just not gonna go all the way along there and up through the media, you know? It's gonna find the easiest route. That has solved that flow problem. And as I said, you don't have to go with a medium sponge there. I've just stuck that on. So the pump head goes on, and if you're wondering what that little pipe is, going up here, that's just to draw any air in. That's the pump inlet. So the pump's sucking water in here, and if there's any air still stuck in here, which there will be when you first set this thing up, even if you totally fill that with water, there'll still be a bubble of air in here. As it draws the water up, It'll also draw air in, it'll remove all the air from here, and it should ensure that the pump runs silently. You'll see that in a few different filters, but not always. So that goes on there. Like that. One. And two. Our filter is done. Just quickly show you that big length of foam. Uh, obviously it was a little bit longer than that. I think it was 60 centimeters, which is two feet. I bought that on eBay. That is really handy for cutting for situations like this where you've got a pump intake that you need protecting. Strictly speaking, it doesn't need that in here. You could just fill it with media in bags, take that little intake pipe off and your pump would suck quite easily through there. But obviously you've got that little spike coming out the bottom of the pump, you'd need to cut that off. It's a bit of a fanny on. It's best just to leave that intake on, put a different foam on, or simply cut that one through the middle. You know, if you've got an existing foam, uh, you don't want to buy more foam, just cut that through the middle and fill it with media underneath there. So now we've ensured that the water flows through this thing properly. We've ensured that it's got a reasonable amount of foams in from coarse to fine, so should have really, really clear water. It's got enough space for chemical media, if you wanted to put that on top of that section. And it's also got twice as much weight of biological media in there. So we've gone from 1.5 kilos to three kilos of really good porous media. So Three kilos of media is 6.6 .6 pounds for you guys in the US. Um, if you tweaked it a little bit, you might get a little bit more in than that, but I use the bio gravel in the bags because the bags are really easy to take out and just give a shake in, in water you've drained from the tank when you want to clean it. Um, I did fill bags with the Bio Home Ultimate, but they didn't fit in there as well at all. The bio gravel just kind of flops into place. Um, it's a really useful media. So three kilos or 6.6 .6 pounds is a, quite a lot of media. And that puts this thing on par, as far as how much media it holds, with a Fluval 406 or 407. Um, and all pond solutions, 
1400EF or the equivalent Sun Sun, which is the oh god, 303, Sun Sun 303, that will also hold 3 kilos if you use the bottom tray in that for your foams, as well as a load of other different types of um, filters that also hold a similar amount. They're probably the two you'll know best, the Fluval one and the Old Pond Solutions or the Sun Sun one. So this is a quite an unusually designed filter and the way it came up, as I said before, I couldn't say that it would be very efficient. So hopefully those changes that we've made here will improve the efficiency greatly. I mean, just adding three kilos of media instead of that ceramic crap that came with it, that will make a hell of a difference. So that will enable this filter to be suitable for a full cycle, which is the reduction of ammonia, nitrite and nitrate using that media, uh, for a tank of around 300 litres, which is about 79 US gallons. That's a normally stocked tropical tank. If you've got a goldfish tank or a predator tank or a Malawi tank, a discus tank, something that would be more heavily stocked, more heavily fed, and producing more waste, you could halve that down to about 150 litres if you wanted to see the full cycle. And in US gallons, that would be roughly 39 to 40 US gallons. So it will service a reasonable size tank. And I think you guys in the US can actually get these. I know they're available all throughout Europe, possibly in Australia, and I know they're Biomaster range is available in the US because I've seen you guys making videos on them Because this is also an Awaza product. I would assume you can get these as well So I'll put any relevant links in the video description if you want to check them out They would be classed as a budget filter as far as Awaza products go But with those few changes to make sure that the water flows the right way I could see this being pretty effective so it's a one, as far as the construction and the layout now is concerned, that I would recommend. Now I hardly get to see any comments now because YouTube just doesn't send me notifications. I've got everything ticked and the comments just don't seem to come through, which means I've got to go looking for them. Um, and quite often I don't have the time to go searching for comments. So if you want to get me, my contact details are in the video description and the pinned comment. It's best to phone because I get a nation of emails. Sometimes I can't get to them. And if there's a million questions in an email, I simply don't have the time to answer them. But if you want a phone, you can ask me as many questions as you want and I'll answer them all. Providing I know the answers to them, I'll answer them all whilst you're on the phone. That's the best way to get a hold of me by far. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, please share it online anywhere on forums facebook pages send people links if they've got this particular filter or you've heard somebody talking about it and you want to see how one could be set up obviously you don't have to set it up this way this is just a suggestion um yeah let me know what you think and share to your heart's content this is probably number i don't know 30 odd in this long series of videos so go on to the channel, check out the playlist of all the other videos that I've done. If there's anything that takes your fancy and you want to know more about a particular filter, the chances are the video is either there or it will be coming because I've got about 30 odd videos shot to edit for this series and I just kind of get time to edit them. So I will be trickling videos out over the next few months. This is going to be a a big series you know and hopefully it'll help a lot of people which is what it's all about so please share thanks for watching see you next time